All right, let's talk about patchy airflow. If you've ever found yourself wrestling with a bunch of messy, unreliable data scripts, then this one's for you. We're gonna see how to turn all that chaos into a super smooth automated workflow, one simple step at a time. So let me ask you, does this feel familiar? You've got this fragile web of cron jobs that you're almost afraid to touch? If you're tired of waking up to failed jobs and spending your morning digging through logs, you are in exactly the right place. I mean, this is the reality for so many people, right? You got these tangled cron jobs, no automatic retries when something fails, and the worst part, these hidden dependencies where one little thing breaks and the whole system comes crashing down. Monitoring is a total nightmare, and forget about trying to track where your data came from. So here's our game plan for today. We're going to start with the absolute core of Airflow, which is the DAG. Then we'll dive into how to write modern workflows that are clean and Pythonic. After that, we'll make those workflows dynamic, get into some advanced orchestration, and then, my favorite part, we'll finish with some pro tips and common pitfalls that'll save you a ton of headaches. Okay, first things first. Let's talk about the single most important concept in Airflow, the DAG. And honestly, the best way to think about a DAG is just like a recipe. So what in the world is a DAG? The acronym stands for Directed Acyclic Graph. Let's break that down real quick. Directed just means your steps have a clear one-way flow. Acyclic is super important. It means no infinite loops. And graph just means it's a set of tasks that are all connected. It's the blueprint for your entire data process. And this whole concept is a perfect fit for a classic ETL workflow. You know the drill. You extract some data, you transform it, and then you load it somewhere. You absolutely cannot load the data before you've transformed it. A DAG is what enforces that logic. It guarantees that these steps run in the right order every single time. So we get the concept, but how do we actually write one of these? Well, let's look at the modern and frankly much better way to write workflows using what Airflow calls the Taskflow API. And you can really see the difference here. The old way, the classic style on the left, involved a lot of boilerplate. You had to manually create task objects and then explicitly set the dependencies between them. But the modern Taskflow API it's a total game changer. You just write a normal Python function, slap a little at task decorator on top, and Airflow is smart enough to figure out the dependencies just by seeing how you pass data from one function to the next. It's just cleaner. Okay, static workflows are a great start, but real world workflows need to be flexible. So let's talk about how to make your DAGs dynamic using three key features, connections, variables, and XCOMs. Now this is a huge one. This is probably the most important rule for production-ready code. Get your configuration out of your code. Never ever hard code an API key or a password. Instead, Airflow gives you these secure tools. Use connections to store all your credentials for databases or APIs and use variables for simple things like a bucket name or a file path. This is how you keep your DAG secure and reusable. This brings up a really good question though. If each of our Python functions is its own separate task, how do they pass information back and forth? You know, how does the output from task one become the input for task two? And the answer is a feature called XCOMS, which is short for cross communication. But here is the golden rule, and you really need to remember this. XCOMS are only for small bits of information. Things like a file name, a record count, a status update. If you need to pass a giant data frame or a huge file, the right way to do it is to save that file to external storage, like S3. And then you just pass the path to that file using an XCOM. It's like mailing someone the key to a house, not trying to mail the entire house. All right, ready to level up? Once you've got the basics down, Airflow opens up some seriously powerful patterns for orchestration. And one of the coolest is making your workflows event-driven. The way we used to think about this was always based on time. You know, run this job every day at 9 a.m. But what's the problem with that? Well, the job runs whether the data it needs is actually there or not. And that leads to a ton of wasted compute and a lot of failed runs. The modern, way smarter approach is to use a feature called datasets. The idea is simple. You can have a producer DAG that when it finishes, basically announces, hey, I've updated this data set. And then, any consumer DAGs that are listing for that specific data set will automatically kick off and run. It's so much more efficient. No more guessing. Your workflows run exactly when they should. So you might be wondering, how does Airflow connect to all these different tools, from AWS to Google Cloud to Snowflake? 
The answer is providers. Just think of them as plugins. They're installable packages that basically teach Airflow how to talk to hundreds of other systems, connecting it to pretty much the entire modern data stock. Okay, let's wrap this up with a lightning round of practical advice. These are the tips and common mistakes that will really help you when you're ready to take your workflows into production. First up, you have got to test your DAGs. Don't just write them and hope for the best. You can start with simple static checks just to catch basic syntax errors. Then you should absolutely be running unit tests in your CI CD pipeline to check the DAG structure. And for debugging, it's amazing. You can run a single task all by itself right from your command line. Seriously, you might want to screenshot this slide because this is your troubleshooting cheat sheet. We've all been there. Module not found. You just forgot to install a Python library. Permission denied. Go check your connection settings. Task stuck in scheduled. Your scheduler is probably down. And if everything is running super slow because of giant XCOMs, well, you already know the fix for that one. And finally, this is the one tip that trips up everybody when they're starting out. You have to remember Airflow lives and breathes UTC. Always. If you're setting a schedule based on your local time, your jobs are going to run at the wrong time. You have to be super explicit with your time zones. So there you have it. We've gone from that tangled mess of scripts to a workflow that's organized, it's reliable, and you can actually see what's going on. You've now got the tools to take control of that chaos. So the only question left is, what are you going to build next? <laughs>